today we're going to be talking about air versus liquid cooling and specifically your GPU featuring the Silverstone Alta G1M small form factor case. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to smash that like button if you like content on GPUs, PC hardware, we do it all here. So today we're gonna talk about specifically air-cooled versus liquid-cooled. A little bit of course will apply to your CPU, but we're gonna focus on the GPU itself and we're gonna feature uh, the case Silverstone's Alta G1M. Now this is gonna be a small form factor case, uh, mini ITX, and it also supports MATX. It's not the smallest case you can get for those type of really small mini ITX applications, but what it can do certainly is going to be a little bit different than a typical small case, and you'll see it has a very unique layout. Now, one of the biggest issues facing pretty much PC builders, even crypto miners, anybody who are basically building rigs with the newest RTX GPUs, heat and insane power draw. So if it wasn't hard enough to get one of the new, you know, NVIDIA 3080s and 3090s, it certainly is even harder at times to keep them nice and cool. So first, let's talk about the actual case that we're doing the build in. In this case, I'm going to be using a Mini ITX motherboard. It's actually the Mini ITX D. It's the Impact X570 motherboard. This is going to have a Ryzen 5800X. Pretty nice gaming CPU. Tends to at times run a little bit hot, but it is a fast 8 core CPU, which is nice to pair with these more high end GPUs. So basically, if you're going to cool your CPU in a case like this, you have the choice between air cooling, liquid cooling, like an all-in-one enclosure like an AIO or you can also fit a custom loop in this case. Now if you do use some type of an air cooler tower this will fit perfectly in this case. It is a pretty large case for Mini ITX. The key thing here you have that big 180 millimeter fan on the bottom of the case. This is gonna pretty much shoot all that hot air right up to the top of the case. Silverstone has done this before with different enclosures that you have this sort of vertical GPU mounting. It certainly is pretty unique. Not as many cases do this i really wish that more cases had that sort of like top to bottom approach and mounted the gpu sort of in a vertical fashion so with this upward airflow you can certainly do an air cooler without any issue here you're not going to have any type of constrained airflow and of course you can also put fans sort of where the radiator bracket is that goes right on the front typically this is where you would put an aio but if you're doing an air cooling tower you can certainly put some more fans here that way you're just going to have a lot more airflow going towards your air cooler now on the the GPU side, if you're using an air cooled GPU, same thing's going to apply. That huge 180 millimeter fan, and now it's good that it's a large fan. The larger the fan is, it can spin faster at lower RPMs, and therefore producing more airflow. That's going to hit that air cooled GPU and pretty much bring all of the air up top. And this is certainly very, very important, especially for all of the large RTX GPUs. Like the first one that I tried in here, this is going to be an RTX 3080 Ti, which runs just as hot pretty much much as an RTX 3090 and even though this is a pretty beefy cooler with a triple fan setup you're going to need all the air cooling and fan support that you can really cram into this case. Now it does have these perforated panels on the front and on the side of the case. This is going to give you a little bit more openings for airflow for your GPU which is certainly very important but the key thing here will be that fan blowing the hot air from the bottom to the top and you can also put the fans on the front like on the radiator bracket much like you cool your CPU in order to get a little bit of cooler air coming in. Now, on the top, it doesn't really look like you have room for very much, you know, adding another fan or anything like that. Maybe the most you could do is custom mount a smaller fan, maybe like 80 millimeters or something like that would do, but it doesn't really have dedicated spots for fans. Maybe perhaps a future revision may, that may be nice. That way it just helps to exhaust that air a little bit easier. But for the most part, maybe the idea here is that that 180 millimeter fan is enough to really push that air all the way to the top. So while this case is small form factor technically it is still a pretty large case compared to other mini ITX enclosures the benefit is you will be able to fit a motherboard that's like MATX if you want something a little bit bigger than mini ITX you can fit a little bit longer power supply and this one I'm using the Silverstone 1000 watt 
power supply. This is one of their newest SFXL power supplies. They're a little bit longer and 1000 watts with the type of hardware that I'm packing in this case certainly is going to be pretty much necessary because previously when you did a small form factor case you were limited to much smaller PSUs but during the last several years we've gotten these really monster wattage PSUs while being not so monster in their size and that helps you power these 3080 Ti's and 3090's especially the next GPU that we're going to try in this case you'll see that we need as much power and headroom as we can get for the wattage in this smaller case enclosure so that kind of shows you the benefit of having sort of a larger sort of small form factor case it's still easy to move around it's not like particularly heavy but it is more like a mid tower or something like that rather than a mini ITX enclosure just because of the Way that it's laid out it's a little bit taller but while there may be some drawbacks for some having a little bit larger enclosure if they really want mini itx or something like that this case really isn't designed exactly for that it's designed to fit that 180 millimeter fan on the bottom giving you really optimal airflow and the impressive thing look at this 3080 ti that i have in here this is a massive car that gives other cases even mid tower cases that are more open and not mini itx it can give a lot of cases trouble because of its massive size it's like a three slot cooler very very thick so it's a very large gpu and in this case it fits really without a problem easily able to install the gpu and take it out without really any clearance issues at all so this is probably one of the biggest gpus that you're ever going to have to fit in a case like this so that's a huge advantage to its larger size you can fit these monster gpus for example i've built in some other cases like the n case m1 even the nr 200p and in those cases you'll struggle to fit a much larger gpu than something like a reference edition or founders edition if you even try to put something like an evga you know 3080 ti in there while you may almost get it there it's going to be a very tight fit and you definitely couldn't fit something like this this gigabyte master with the huge three slot cooler but in the Silverstone case, you certainly can. So let's move on to liquid cooling. Now, this is where I'm going to use a 3090 Kingpin. This is going to be the hybrid model that's liquid cooled with a 360 millimeter AIO. If you rather liquid cool your CPU, you could also fit a 360 millimeter uh, radiator for a CPU AIO here. Or you can do it like I did here and have this massive GPU, which I don't think anybody ever thought would be in sort of a, a case that has anything to do with mini ITX. As you can see, fit perfectly fine. I was able to put the radiator as well as fans. Now I had to slightly modify which fans I would put on the top just because I have a large air cooler in there, but you could even get a lower profile air cooler to fit more fans on the radiator, or possibly you can run a smaller AIO going down to the bottom or something like that. As you can see here, the Kingpin GPU, now liquid cooled, the hybrid cooler. It still has its little air cooler, which is you know smaller than on a typical, it's just one fan rather than two or three fans on a GPU of this caliber that would usually require cooling so that 180 millimeter fan on the bottom still does its job with the CPU and giving them some fresh air and it helps to sort of expel some of that hot air that's going to be brought in from the radiator on the front all that cool air will be brought in from the case of the front through the radiator where it warms up there it's going to hit sort of those fans from the bottom the 180 millimeter fan shoot all that hot air up and keeping the GPU much cooler I was surprised how nice and quiet and fairly cool that I was able to keep a liquid cool GPU in this case. So that brings us to the question, should you air cool or liquid cool your GPU, especially in a smaller enclosure like this? Typically, you wouldn't really have the room to liquid cool a GPU in a very small enclosure unless you do a custom loop and you maybe modify a couple of things in certain cases. But here, without really having to modify anything physically on the case, I was able to fit a massive 360 millimeter AIO, which is unheard of in small form factor cases but that's going to be one of the pluses for this being a large mini itx case if that's the way you want to phrase it by no means is it really like a small form factor case in the traditional sense it is a large case it just happens to fit smaller form factor motherboards and have a pretty unique design so considering the amount of power that you're packing per square inch in a small case like this I think liquid cooling, especially with something like the Kingpin, which can get outrageously power hungry and hot. That's why we have that thousand watt uh, PSU there. That's going to help to keep it nice, clean power and give you a tremendous amount of headroom. Now, if you're doing that in a small case, 
doing it liquid cooled makes absolute sense because then you have all the fresh air coming in you don't have to rely solely on sort of that bottom fan and the case airflow to cool your gpu after all something that produces this much heat you're going to have to have even that bottom 180 millimeter fan going pretty much at higher rpm to be able to expel all that heat without any issues just because these gpus now some of them are approaching four to five hundred watts like this kingpin gpu even the 3080 ti can start to get really really high some of them have unlocked bioses like the uh, 3090 that can get up to 500 watts power draw and that means a tremendous amount of heat so if you have a hybrid cooler versus an air cooler i think these monster gpus actually make more sense in a smaller enclosure like this because really you're packing so much power in a small amount of space now if you wanted to take it one step further you could do a custom loop in this case they do make 180 millimeter um, radiators that you can put on the bottom on the radiator bracket on the front you can certainly fit a 360 millimeter radiator and you'll still have a decent amount of clearance between that radiator and the cpu block to be able to fit maybe something like a small form factor pump or something like that certainly will be a little bit tight but theoretically you could do a 360 and maybe 180 on the bottom and that should really be able to keep most things cool short of probably a 3090 3080 ti and maybe the highest end cpus if you want to do a custom loop in a smaller enclosure like this you may want to drop it down to maybe like a 3070 level or something like that and maybe not the highest end cpus even like the intel stuff is really over 300 watts now running very very hot so as long as you keep that under control should be fine but if you want to run the hottest most powerful hardware i think the liquid cooling option with the aio such as on the kingpin such as on the hybrid gpus that evga has make like asus has uh, their gpus both amd and nvidia that come with a cooler in conclusion it's a lot of fun to pack a lot of hardware in cases that aren't particularly large in the past even though this is a large sort of small form factor case it's still not as large as some of the big cases you would have needed to pack something like a kingpin or a really powerful cpu now with this sort of intelligent layout with the airflow from the bottom to the top with that large fan as well as having room for like a 360 millimeter radiator that really opens up a lot of possibilities and it certainly explains some of the size choices that this case has it really is meant to fit as much powerful hardware as you can fit while keeping the form factor relatively small compared to larger cases that you would need for this type of hardware all right guys so remember to subscribe smash that like button let me know if you have any questions down below what type of case you're building in and i'll see you guys on the next video